Thanks, Alex. So now we're going to take a look at some improvements to the sketching in SOLIDWORKS 2014. So if we switch over to SOLIDWORKS, the first change uh, that you'll probably never see happen is with regard to the sketch scaling. So as most of you will know, when you're sketching along, uh, you'll draw it out roughly to size and then start applying your dimensions. Uh, sometimes that can cause the sketch to sort of move in ways that you don't want it to. So here, just as an example, we've got a circle at 99 millimeters here. If I drop that dimension down now and fill in a value of 35, what you see is the size of the sketch doesn't change at all. So what's actually happening here is the system is scaling the sketch to that first dimension you place. It just makes life a lot easier when you come to add any additional dimensions uh, and just keeps the integrity of the sketch the same. So historically in training and things like that we'd always advise people to uh, start with the smallest dimension first. That no longer is the case now so it should make for a lot faster sort of dimensioning of your sketches. Okay, so we've just filled on a number of other dimensions there, and our next improvement here is the introduction of something called the lasso selection tool. So let's say I want to select these two circles. If we just turn on the box select to grab those two circles, you'll see that I'll get an extra entity if I do that. So I'd have to deselect that extra entity uh, to be able to apply an equals relation to those circles. With the new lasso selection, I can use that and grab hold of those two entities like so make them equal very very easily. The lasso selection does prefer or does retain the left to right selection of getting everything in the box or the right to left selection of getting everything the uh, the window crosses like so. So quite a nice tool just available from your right click there. So if we just fill on another dimension here for this circle uh, which wants to be 25 like so we've almost completed our sketch so what we, we're actually doing here is laying out a belt drive system uh, and we want to control the position of this circle uh, a little bit better. What I'd like to do is sort of control that with a path, uh, but I haven't created this as blocks uh, or used the belt chain functionality. So historically there wasn't much I could do aside from start again. In 2014 we now have a new style of dimension called the path length dimension. So if I select the uh, chain here, I can apply that path length dimension to those items, fill in the size, and now my sketch is fully controlled. So what that actually does is it converts all the entities I've selected into a path and allows me to dimension those. So a really nice improvement. Just switch over to another area that we've seen some improvement in sketching, which is the sketch picture scale. So those of you who use sketch pictures will know that it's, it's often worthwhile creating a construction line in your sketch first before bringing the picture in. It gives you a point of reference to scale the sketch to. When we bring in the sketch picture uh, and place it down, invariably it will be a lot larger than the dimension we actually want it to be uh, because of the way pictures are. Now here if I just turn on some transparency, our industrial designer has sketched on a reference dimension for us here of 6.5 inches. Uh, the new option in 2014 is the, is the scale tool here. So with this enabled, I get a blue bar on the screen. I can actually drag that to a known point on the sketch and then drag the second end to a no another known point, giving me the length there. And you'll see I can rotate this up and down as well. If I place that down like so, uh, I get a dimension control box here, so I fill in the dimension that I want, and you'll see it scales the sketch to suit that dimension. So now all that's left for me to do is position that on my sketch line that I've got. So if we move that around, place that down, again we can use the manipulator here at this end to rotate it. We've just got a much easier way of actually scaling those sketch pictures around, so it does make life a lot easier. Okay, on to our third area of improvement in 2014, which is uh, a lot to do with consumer product design, sort of curvy shapes, things like that. So firstly, if we take a look at this sketch profile here, one of the improvements that we've seen is on conics. So here I've got a fillet in this corner, which I'm just gonna remove, and in this corner, which I'm gonna remove, like so, and we're gonna place in a conic fillet with some conics. 
So if we turn on the new option here, which is the automatic tangency, we can place a conic between here and here, and it will pick up on the neighbouring lines and apply tangent relationships. So we'll do the same at this end. So if we pick the two entities and place the conic down, you'll see it adds all the tangencies that we would have historically manually had to add. So now if we just dimension these conics here, so we want a 0.65 row value at that end and a 0.7 at this end. And we'll just finish off by tidying up the sketch with some known dimensions here. So we want that to be 142. So that new tangency option for conics is quite nice. It just enables us to apply those types of things a lot quicker. Uh, if we look at another example here, we'll take a look at this sketch. Let's say we want to replace this end line with a conic fillet, so we'll just remove that, apply our conic in between here and here. You'll see it picks up those tangency options again quite nicely, and then all I need to do is drag that, reposition it, and then apply our row value onto here of 0.2, just to fully define that sketch. So using those there, it's a it's actually quite a nice way instead of using a face fillet or something like that to get a really nice smooth sort of facing to uh, to that rib there. The next uh, few improvements are related to splines so if we take a look at this sketch here you'll see we've got a pretty well defined spline here on the screen so a lot of the control points are dimensioned with their respective heights and lengths but we may want to control the spline uh, with a physical length, just so we can use that for material requisitions uh, to find out how much material we're using. Historically, we couldn't do that. Now, with the Smart Dimension tool, if we click on a spline, we can actually fully control the length uh, there, like so. So the, the actual curvature in this point is going to be adjusted because the positions uh, of those control points are controlled automatically with those dimensions. So if we just exit the sketch and rebuild, another sort of spline improvement that I'm going to talk about is the introduction of a new type of spline. So here if we look at this spline on the screen and we just right click and take a look at the curvature combs, you'll see that the curvature on it is quite wavy in certain places, it's, it's up and down here and it's not ideally what we want. Now historically what we would have to do is probably adjust these control points and the influence of the handle to try and adjust that uh, and it can be quite difficult especially when you're working with a symmetric spline like we have on the screen here so in 2014 we now have the addition of something called a style spline so I can actually draw out uh, the sort of intersection points of the controls like so with center lines and it will create the spline between them for me now this makes life a lot easier when we come to add dimensions in between things. So here you'll see I can make that perpendicular and equal to some reference geometry very easy. We'll do the same over on the other side, like so. Uh, we can make this base horizontal. And if we make these two external lines here equal as well. And we'll just finish this off just by putting some positional dimensions in. But what you can see is it becomes a lot easier to actually fully define a spline in terms of its location. And if we just take a look at the curvature on that spline, you'll see it's much, uh, it's much more balanced uh, and a lot freer flowing with the separation from one side to the other. So a really nice way to get some good curvature into your design there. Now the next improvement is, uh, is one of my favourites here. It's something called Replace Sketch Entity. So historically, in previous versions of SOLIDWORKS, if we wanted to use our new spline and disregard our old one, we would have to delete the old one and then rebuild uh, all the features further downstream that referenced that one, including the feature that we're in. In 2014, what we can do now is use something called this replace sketch entity. So I say I want to replace this entity with this one. I get a choice as to whether I delete the original or make it construction, I'm going to delete the original. And what that will do in the background is it's going to replace uh, it's going to replace the original spline with the new one in every reference that that's used downstream the model. So now if we exit our sketch, you'll see that we don't end up with any errors uh, downstream in the tree or in the feature that we were working with. So a really nice improvement there to the software. 
So if we just come back here just to summarise what we've seen. So we've seen the automatic scaling of the first sketch dimension, uh, the new lasso selection tool, and also the introduction of the path length dimension. We've seen a new scale tool within sketch pictures, which allows us to snap the image into place. And with splines, we've seen the automatic conic tangency at the end point, uh, a new fixed length spline dimension, also the new style spline, and the ability to replace sketch entities. Okay, so Alex is going to run us through some fillets.